crazy scrolling. Um, so I'm going to finish with uh, just, I think, four poems from the latter part of the book, which moves into 2020. Uh, so starting here with 2020, which I wrote before 2020 really quite revealed itself in its true colors. 2020. Welcome to the year of twin swans emerging from two tunnels, I say, full of sorrow, having looked ahead to far distant centuries and knowing no other date will ever match such elegance. In the floating mirror of 2020, we are all still visionaries. Such a perfect number, I almost wouldn't mind it on my grave. There are a number of lockdown poems, <laughs> I'm sure, to, to meet the many in the world um, of lockdown poems. I'm going to read a long one. I read a slightly shorter one yesterday at the live launch, but I would like to give this poem an airing as well. Lockdown Day 30. Black Rock, the far end of the beach. One last steep stretch of pebbles before the marina with its brutalist defenses, Tarkovsky overpass, Asda car park, cold shoulders, the sea aside. Hunkered at the gates, this patch of beach is fortified too, bordered east, west and north by the marina seawall, a tall flint groin and weathered railings. I used to walk by often, past the graffiti hoardings, heading to the gym, a sub-modernist barn, ugly for miles, its curved roof arcing above the storm wall like a steel whale, beached now, as we all are. There's a gap in the railings by the recycling bins and a council sign about the rare ecosystem, salt-whipped plants growing without soil. But I never descended. From the path, it's clumps of sea kale and rock samphire the charred circles on the pebbles from the open fires youth burn at night, gave Black Rock an air of dereliction, the survivalist backyard of an architectural leviathan. I enter only to prevent the return of my cancer. Now though the gym is closed, shops shut early, and I find myself one evening heading down to the sea to pick kale. A man is doing yoga on the groin, a bronze jackknife carving a portal in the air we now all know as threat. Unmasked, I step down to the beach. The tide is lower than I've ever seen it here, exposing a broken column of, oh, black rocks, half buried in wet flanks of sand and halfway down the storm wall, a ledge accessible from the shingle I crunch across, checking for police. Three men are smoking at the end of the ledge. A goth girl trudges to the sea. No one's looking, no one cares. My heart, a cabbage butterfly. I hover above a spreading blue-gray mound, search for a tender young shoot, swiftly sever its thick stalk with my thumbnail, slip the crinkled fleshy leaf into my bag, move on, covertly gathering my daily greens, subjecting each stout plant to one small sacrifice. For 20 years I've walked on by, but I'm here now, foraging for forgiveness. The ledge is just another step on that long path. What first seems a dead-end passage of cement and corrugated iron, its surface slick with seaweed, the patina of high tide. Awkward in my burks, treading the edge of a treacherous emerald carpet, trying not to slip or crush a crusty host of muscles. I stop. The smokers are ahead. Looking down the storm wall at my back, I found I realize the one place in the whole of Brighton Beach where the marina disappears. At my feet, a limpet winks, its shell a golden nipple sticker in a water spider's web. Beside it, like a clitoral ballet troupe, sheathed in ancient infant molars, barnacles are dancing. Tiny motes of flesh pulsing through the apertures of their jagged carapaces to feed on what? Microscopic algae? Light? The jouissance of being fully present in a life? Beneath me, 
In a frigid swirl of silk and laughing lace, small waves tease the shore. Ahead is the hospital, its scaffolding and cranes. Here the sun is dying and I let it kiss my face. So there are many poems actually in the book um, reflecting on Black Lives Matter, which of course, you know, ignited uh, th that lockdown summer. Um, I, I read two last night uh, at the launch, and I'm going to read another one today from lockdown week 11, which is the, about the aftermath of the murder of George Floyd. Lockdown week 11. America blazes, root, stalk and branch. A cytokine firestorm, the immune system attacking itself, or a natural disturbance, a necessary wildfire, promoting crowns, sprouting plants, diverse young growth. As the debates ignite on timelines and phone screens, a student nurse from Uganda scrubs down after her shift and wonders again, was I careful enough? I think as, as we all know, last summer's Black Lives Matter movement seemed to mark what a, a turning point uh, in that it seemed that more and more white people kind of got, got it. Um, and that's just the beginning of, a, of the painful process of dismantling systemic racism. Uh, and many uncomfortable conversations must be had uh, in institutions uh, and, you know, between between friends. Um, this is next final poem is a poem on one of those conversations, um, necessary conversations that have to happen now. On watching Edward Colston get dumped into Bristol Harbour. Was there a poem in the long grass today? in the black spotted blood drop of a ladybird claiming a stem, the reticence of nettles at a distance, that enormity of sky beneath which other people marched from Minneapolis to London, Amsterdam to Accra. If so, I didn't find it, nestled as I was on the crest of a hill between tower block and garden center, spider web and iPhone, Failure and elation, a white friend with an elderflower posy, acknowledging her fear of black men on the street at night, and at my back, licking its blue lips, the history-hungry sea. Thank you.